we really wanted to focus on the concept of uh, the power of our stories. We're living in a time where, um, a very interesting time, right, in so many different ways, but where stories are everywhere coming at us from like all different kinds of media outlets. So many you would take like, a very long time to list them and they hit us in all different directions, but sometimes uh, the stories can uplift and inspire and we have the, that's really a choice that we have of what we take in and what we put out. And I wanted to focus on this because um, out of all the, um, you know, many writers, before I started narrative healing, I worked at um, in publishing for many years as a publicist and editor and literary coach. And Jamia Wilson really stands out to me as someone who um, embodies the power of storytelling, both as an activist, as a best-selling author, and as someone who lifts up other authors. So before we stepped into the practice, I wanted to hand the mic over to her to talk a little bit about the power of storytelling. Like why, why, why are we doing this? Well, thank you so much for drawing your attention to the body. So uh, a lot of times when I am thinking about why I specifically tell story, I think it's um, about sort of feeling and experiencing a human need to connect with others. Um, or to connect with myself connection. And all of us have our own different experiences of that. But uh, I believe that the beauty of storytelling and the power of it is really uh, about being able to engage in our curiosity as humans, engage in the human experience through the path of curiosity, the path of asking questions, the path of unfolding a mystery, path of connecting with our empathy um, and the path of being able to inspire others through those stories. And every time I think about what stories do I want to help support and amplify as an editor, I often think about those core root parts of being human when I'm evaluating a manuscript. In addition to the quality and the impact it might make, I ask myself, is this something that would inspire people to connect, to take action, to transform something? Is it something that changes the chemistry of your brain or your heart because you read it or you heard it and somehow you feel like you're different, that an alchemy has happened? And for each of us, story will have a different kind of effect, but it's worth thinking about the power that stories have had on you and how that unique question has played out in you when thinking about how you tell story and what stories you find yourself leaning into engaging and exploring. One of the things I have specifically been asked a lot, um, and I'm saying this in the writing space, but I think it's for any kind of storyteller, uh, is what do you think everyone who wants to write a book should do? And the first thing I always say is read. I think that there's a version of that for every other kind of storytelling that one might do, but I think that the practice of also being a deep listener, which is what I think reading is for those of us who write, um, is something that can really help guide us. And it's also another part of the human experience, the embodied experience. Uh, partnering with Lisa has been really wonderful because I am someone who has often felt more connected to that uh, part of storytelling that to me feels like an oxygen need that I need to do it, that I would do it even if I weren't paid to do it. I think um, that I need to have water every day. I need to eat and I need to write. Um, but for me, I had always sort of felt like I was an embodied person that uh, I feel more comfortable in, in my head, more comfortable in my heart around the stories, unfolding the questions. And I've been seeking more connection with the body to tap into the next layer and the next power of my storytelling and listening to those cues. So what's really powerful about the narrative healing experience is that it offers that opportunity for all of us who will come to this work in different ways to lean into moving up, moving up to what our growth edge is. If you're someone who's sort of more in the cerebral part of writing, maybe your growth edge is to listen to the story of your body and lean more into those practices that are outside of your comfort zone. And if you're someone who's more invite, embodied and you're a dancer and you tell story through your body, but you are wanting to write a song or you're wanting to uh, draw a graphic memoir storyboard or whatever that is to 
lean into doing something else um, that you would usually do. So I would just like to issue that a powerful invitation of that to think about what the edge is for you and um, what the next layer you can peel back from in terms of the power of your story might be in our time together and beyond. And I'm going to, um, and we've already started, but we're going to keep beginning again. Um, I'm going to invite everybody to find a comfortable seat. And by seat, I mean sitting in a way or holding your body, finding a position where you feel more or less at ease. That's not always possible, but perhaps like for me right now, I'm sitting on a, on a sofa and my feet are on the ground. Perhaps you're cross-legged. You might want to stand up and walk in a, in a rhythm, like a slow pace, like a walking meditation. You might enjoy lying down. Um, and you might want to experiment a little bit. When we talk about finding our seat, we're really talking about finding a position where we feel at ease in the world where our breath is supported. I say all of that because there can be an instinct, I think, in these sorts of environments to find a seat and sort of like get up there, like sort of upright, uptight, sitting. You know, we're not, we're not, um, we're not doing that. We're going to take a little time and question, like, okay, I found a seat. Is this comfortable? Do I like this? Do I need to move a little bit? I'm not going to guide so much movement in this iteration a lot because I can't see any of you and I can't tell how how everyone's doing. So I'm going to um, offer some practices that. Um, provide opportunities for body awareness and relaxation and come um, join our classes if you'd like to try out some more movement as well. I'm going to take a little morning stretch. So I like to start off by taking my arms up overhead like it's first thing in the morning and taking a side lean. This is terrible if you have anything going on with your shoulders, but any kind of side lean at all, it can be less dramatic than that. Opening up the side body opens the lungs, the heart, and then inhale come up. And so move at your own pace. This is sort of a, but take a few moments to move and breathe. Your eyes can be open or closed. Consider rolling your shoulders one direction and then the other. And then moving the head around at all. I don't know where you're coming from, but take some movements that just listen to your body. Does it feel like, oh, some movement would be good or that doesn't feel good? So even taking a moment like we have just now to listen, like, does the body want to move? How does it want to move? Or like that felt good or I really didn't like that. That kind of attention already primes the body like, oh, you're going to listen to me right now. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm going to stay with you. So let's take another 10 breaths or so to take any mindful movement of your choosing. If you want to move with me. Take a few seated cow cows. So my hands are on my legs, exhaling to round the back, inhaling. A lot of the movements, I would say all, but there's probably some exceptions, but pretty much all the movements in bear to healing, exhaling to round, inhaling to arch. You keep going with your own breath, are designed to be done at your desk. So you don't really need, or your car, or any place that's not a lot of space around you. So take a few more cat cows seated, inhaling, arching, exhaling, rounding. Really nice. And then as you're ready, come to a comfortable seat. Find your spine long, your chest more or less open, your throat more or less open, broad shoulders, ear pods in. And take a full inhale and exhale. And do that another couple of times, noticing what does it feel like to be breathing in your body right now? Gently review the last hour of your life. What did it take to get here? What, what were the motions? What did you have to say no to? What did you say yes to? Appreciate yourself. And let go of all of that effort and begin to come to this moment right now at the breath is right now. Is there any language coming up to describe the breath? If you like, you can bring a hand to the heart, hand to the belly and 
breathe into your palms. It can be helpful to bring the hands to parts of the body that may actually move when you're breathing. Really nice. And the eyes can be open or closed. Just try to keep your gaze someplace that's not moving. And I'd like to begin with a breath exercise that's designed to anchor the nervous system. It's a relaxation breath. I find it to be a really helpful tool that's available all the time. Wherever you are, you can do this one and you can keep your hands on your uh, heart and belly if that's supportive or bring them back to your thighs, but put them someplace on purpose. And I'm gonna talk you through it first and then we'll do it together. We're going to take an inhale for the count of six, retain the breath for a count of one, and then exhale for the count of eight. And when we're inhaling and retaining, I'm gonna give you an image of sort of a swing. You're gonna retain, it means it sort of hovers. We're not like holding the breath. It's more of like a, ah, and then exhaling. Yeah. So let's begin together. So inhale and exhale. And now we'll inhale two, three, four, five, six, and retain. And exhale two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again. In two, three, four, five, six, retain. And X, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll do it once more. In two, three, four, five, six, retain. And X, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now take that one or two more times on your own, and your count might be faster or slower than what I just did. And whenever you're ready with that, take a full exhale and return to a normal breath. No effort, just letting that automatic breath pattern return. And see if you can let a little bit more weight settle into the support beneath you. Let your feet and hips be a little more heavy if you're seated. A lot of the time when we're seated or walking around, it's like we're trying to hold all our weight in our jaw or our hips, but the chair is probably better at it than your jaw is. So as you're letting go and releasing, just notice if anything shifted in the last couple of minutes, what's changed, what's remained the same. I want to try one more exercise. I think this is a really nice warm up before any writing practice. Take your hands in front of you if they're able and make sort of two paddles. You could use two fingers or three fingers. And you're going to bring your fingers right to your jawline. Find the hinge of your jaw, which you can find by opening and closing your mouth. Find that little area. It doesn't have to be precise at all. And begin to take. Uh, slow circular motions down your jawline and press with intention, but not too hard, like the same amount of pressure you might use on like a fresh peach or something like that. Like you're not trying to dig in too hard. And we're going to go up and down the jaw. Do you, can, do you find anything interesting? Like, oh, there's some info there, then, then stay there a little longer. And then when you get to the chin, take your fingers and take a little tug on your chin, releasing the pressure around your mouth. Great. And then you're gonna take these fingers and go up and down your nose. 
releasing some pressure there. You know, your whole face actually freezes when you're looking at screens. This is a nice one actually to do their eyes closed. So this is a nice way to wake up your face. So now move around the bone structure around your eye and you're basically gonna move your fingers on the, all the hard parts of your face. And your choice, how you move, it could be circles, you might prefer a padding feeling. You can't do this wrong. As you're ready, you'll move up to the hairline following where the hair meets the, the face. Again, more circular motions there. And making sure you're breathing, consider smiling. When's the last time you were really loving with your face like this? Deliberately move down the center of your forehead to the tip of your nose. And you'll bring your fingers to the middle of your forehead, kind of where that third eye space is and start spreading the forehead out. And maybe say something nice to yourself quietly or silently. You can reach your hands more like a flat paddle and take your whole cheek and smush it around. <laughs> so cute and now bring tag you're gonna have to take the, you're gonna tug on your ears a little bit it's hard to do this with my ear lows but yeah Jamia looks great tugging on your ears in every direction there's a lot of tension there actually and then last you're gonna take as if there's I don't know if everyone does this but I've seen people pick up kittens this way you grab the nape of your neck and squeeze there whoops I knew that would happen and then whenever you're done with that, the final touch, take your hands like they're crabs kind of and pat on the top of your head. Is there anything in there you wanna shake out? Like, oh, why am I, anything you're holding on to? Physically release that thought. You know, that nagging thought, some of them are important and a lot of time they're not that important. Like, did I make that appointment or whatever? And then release that and start to shake out your hands. And then take some padding anywhere you might need it. Maybe you want to pat on your chest. You're doing like a seated padding exercise up and down your arms. You might want to go back to some place on your face where you're like, we did that too fast. Let me go back to that area. Have 10 more seconds to take out any tension from your face that you like. Very good.